Welcome to Living Life. May today's word be a living word so that it can transform us and bring us closer to Jesus. The word wisdom means the soundness of an action or decision with regard to the application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Wise people make good judgment, and they have good discernment on what to say, when to say, and how to say things to people in right time and in right way. There are many people with knowledge, but not all people have wisdom. When you listen to people's conversation, some people save other souls by encouraging them through their conversation. But on the other hand, some people kill other souls by making them more discouraged through their conversations. So because words can save life or kill, you must be careful with what you say. Today's text introduces an incident in which the people of the city Uh, were saved through the wise words of a woman. So as we meditate on the passage, I want us to learn the lesson to become saints who can lead people to the path of life. So let's get into today's word together. Second Samuel chapter 20, verses 14 to 26. Sheba passed through all the tribes of Israel to Abel Beth Mecca and through the entire region of the Bichrites, who gathered together and followed him. All the troops with Joab came and besieged Sheba in Abel Beth Mecca. They built a siege ramp up to the city and it stood against the outer fortifications. While they were battering the wall to bring it down, a wise woman called from the city, Listen, listen, tell Joab to come here so I can speak to him. He went toward her, and she asked, Are you Joab? I am, he answered. She said, Listen to what your servant has to say. I'm listening, he said. She continued, Long ago, they used to say, Get your answer at Abel. And that settled it. We are the peaceful and faithful in Israel. You are trying to destroy a city that is a mother in Israel. Why do you want to swallow up the Lord's inheritance? Far be it from me, Joab replied, Far be it from me to swallow up or destroy. That is not the case. A man named Sheba, son of Bichri, from the hill country of Ephraim, has lifted up his hand against the king against David. Hand over this one man, and I'll withdraw from the city. The woman said to Joab, His head will be thrown to you from the wall. Then the woman went to all the people with her wise advice, and they cut off the head of Sheba, son of Bichri, and threw it to Joab. So he sounded the trumpet, and his men dispersed from the city, each returning to his home. And Joab went back to the king in Jerusalem. Joab was over Israel's entire army. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was over the Carathites and Pelathites. Adoniram was in charge of forced labor. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was recorder. Shiva was secretary. Zadok and Abiathar were priests. And Ira the Jerite was David's priest. When Absalom's rebellion was suppressed and David returned to Jerusalem, the conflicts between northern Israel and the tribes of Judah was revealed. The people of the northern Israel tribe expressed their dissatisfaction with the fact that the people of the tribe of Judah led the return of King David without consulting with them. They even expressed that they had robbed the king. However, the people of the tribe of Judah argued that their actions were justified by claiming that the king was from their tribe. Then in the midst of such chaos, a man named Sheba moves the hearts of the people of the tribes of Israel and causes a rebellion. Sheba's rebellion was also a great crisis for King David because it was a rebellion aimed at taking advantage of the antagonism between the tribes of Judah and the tribes of Israel, if many people get killed during their fight, it could act as a great burden on David's kingship. So Joab, who led the soldiers to suppress Sheba's rebellion, surrounded the city of Abel, where Sheba and his group were located, and they were wreaking destruction in order to topple the wall. 
Then a wise man called from the city, and, and a wise woman called from the city and screamed, Here, here, please tell Joab to come and listen to me. So Joab came to her, and she tells Joab that destroying a city is like he's swallowing up the inheritance of the Lord. So do not destroy the city. So Joab said that that's not what he's trying to do. He just wanted to kill Sheba. So when he promised that he will not destroy the city if they, ha- if they hand him over his life, then this woman convinced the people in the city to cut off Sheba's head and hand it over to Joab. And they did. As a result, the rebellion was suppressed without much damage. Without the role of this wise woman, Israel would have suffered greatly and would have had no choice but to face tragedy. Many people could have lost their lives, but because of the wisdom of one woman, they survived without much damage. Sheba, who provoked the tribes of Israel to rebel, faced miserable end, and all the people who followed him were scattered. On the other hand, the wise woman who realized the importance of God's inheritance with words of wisdom saved the lives of the entire city of Abel. The woman moved forward with only wisdom before the people of Abel. It was the wisdom of God that was stronger than Joab's army, so it was enough to convince people. In this way, God's wisdom can overcome any power and knowledge in the world. Wisdom is the cry of truth that awakens a person's heart. That is why we must seek this wisdom from God and become people who save souls by giving good influences through the words of wisdom. Therefore, at every important moment in our lives, we must not rely on the power and knowledge of the world, but only seek God's wisdom written in the Bible and live in this world with that wisdom. And God will use us and he will enable us to handle the gospel ministry that saves many people's lives for his kingdom and for his glory. Let us pray together. Lord, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for blessing us with your words. Help us not to rely on the knowledge of this world, but help us to always rely on your wisdom. And with, all your, with, with your wisdom, help us to discern what is right, what we must do uh, in this world to glorify you and to live for your kingdom. And may we live a life to always obey to your words and follow your path. Lord Father God, we thank you so much for all the things that you have done for us. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.